Hello, Herman here with another episode in the ClearPass workshop series where we will build a ClearPass deployment from scratch and integrate with Wired, Wireless, Active Directory and much more. So this is the second video in the onboarding section of our workshop. And uh, today we will be configuring uh, ClearPass for the onboarding configuration. So in the last video, we set up the uh, workshop certificate authority. So the onboard CA that will do the uh, issuing of the client certificates that are needed for the onboarding. And uh, what we will be doing now is that we are uh, creating the configuration. So first we need to configure, configure a network here. So uh, there's an example network. So we just create a new one uh, with our workshop um, workshop uh, onboarding. So here we can select if we want to do wireless, wired, or both. So for now, let's pick both of them. Then uh, we create here um, how we connect to the network. So um, you can yeah, configure WPA uh as well but uh yeah let's uh, pick the default and here we put our uh, corporate SID so which is corp one it's not a hidden network so let's go on here we can select how we want to onboard and uh yeah we want to onboard all type of devices with a client certificate which is TLS um yeah you can do uh other configuration as well which will be using uh, username and password but uh, my advice, uh, leave it to TLS, which is the most secure authentication method. So then here you can uh, do some other settings. So for example, uh, you can uh, put it uh, for Android in which store you want to put it. Um, for Windows, if you want to put it in the user store, which doesn't need administrative uh, credentials to onboard or in the machine or even in both. Um, but if you put it in a machine, you need admin credentials to do the onboarding, but the onboarding will use uh, will be used for any user. But typically we'll leave it at a uh, user. Um, then here we can set the trust settings um, and by default this is OK and it will take the certificates. Um, so it will be used to uh, to validate the radius certificates uh, when the client is connecting. Uh, by default, it will take it from the ClearPass uh, radius if you want really to uh, yeah to configure your trust uh, yourself. You can do so, um, but yeah, typically the automatic configuration works good. So unless you have a complex configuration with multiple certificates or are in a uh, translation to other CA certificates, um, um, only in those conditions you will need to touch these and otherwise just leave it uh, at this setting. So let's go on uh, here. We can uh, yeah, enable a few other things, but uh, typically we don't uh, touch these either. And we can set a proxy and we'll leave that um, as well. So basically, uh, yeah, we just put in our SSID Corp one and we change it from wireless to both. So then we go here under the deployment and provisioning. Uh, we can uh, create a new configuration profile right here and let's put it in. And here we can select which network will be used for onboarding. So we just have one onboarding, uh, one network, um, which will uh, make that uh, it will be automatically picked. If you tick multiple networks here, the end user during the uh, onboarding process will be asked uh, which one to provision. So for that reason, it's good to have um, to have one, one for your own with uh, just that certificate. But you can see it's very flexible. You can build a lot of workflows in there as well. And then we need to create a new provisioning settings where we will bind uh, the profile and the network settings together. Uh, workshop onboard. We can put our organization name in, which will be shown later on. Here we can select the certificate authority. So the workshop CA is the one that we picked or created in the last episode. And here we can uh, yeah, select if we want to have that certificate uh, issue the certificates or we want to have them from external CA. And as stated before, um, unless you are completely sure that you need to have the Active Directory CA, 
just use the local uh, certificate authority because it's most secure uh, because uh, it's isolated uh, for, from a security standpoint. Then here as well, the TLS certificate uh, authority will put that to the uh, workshop CA as well. And here we can select the type of key that's used for the client certificate. And we can create it on the server or we can create it on the device. And for security, um, I would pick the 2048 um, um, at least and uh, make it created on the device. So the private key for the certificate, the client certificate will never leave the device. So I typically pick this one. Um, and then, yeah, this is uh, what we uh, add to the certificate. So this is how we do the authorization against the clear pass. We can use an application authentication or we can use a radius. So typically we use the uh, use the application authentication and here we have the profile. So that's the profile we created right here. Um, and we can put a maximum of the device. So one user can only onboard, uh, four devices, for example. So, um, or leave it at, uh, um, at zero. Then we have a few other settings here. So we can uh, send out emails to the users, um, when they're, uh, credentials are uh, about to expire. So uh, you, know, you can set when to do it. Um, what I did is uh, the default setting is uh, yeah, a bit more than a year. Uh, so what we can test uh, later on is if it, the certificate is valid for uh, less than uh, less than half a year uh, uh, left, then we can uh, put people uh, again through the onboarding. So we don't need this, but uh, yeah, we can put it in here. Um, but we'll uh, leave it out now. Um, and this is an option uh, where we can uh, revoke certificates for devices that are inactive. So if a device doesn't come on the network for 30 days, uh, automatically the certificate will be revoked, which um, also will release the license because uh, ClearPass is counting the number of um, active, active certificates, not those really in use. So if you have a lot of certificates that are not used, this one will uh, will help you to reduce the number of certificates in a database. And this um, allows you if people are re-enrolling and for some reason uh, an old certificate is in there, it will automatically delete the old one. So we go to next. Here we can decide which devices to onboard. Um, so yeah, we'll leave that uh, by default. Uh, one thing here is if you have, uh, for example, uh, Windows mobile devices or other devices that don't support this uh, onboarding, automatic onboarding, uh, you can tick here the uh, web-based uh, certificate provisioning, uh, which will, uh, for unsupported devices, um, it will... Um, uh, pr allow the user to just generate the certificate and the user will be on its own to do the configuration. But for all the other ones, it will be automatically, uh, it's just for some rare devices like, uh, the windows, uh, the windows mobile devices, uh, that don't support onboarding. Then we go to the next here. We can, uh, put in the device name. So let's call this workshop board let's put these default so here we can select the skin and yeah we created a very nice galleria skin in the guest part so let's use that one And we leave the rest um, as default as well. So here we can select if you want to have customized messages. So um, if we want to have our own messages, we can add it here. But for now, let's leave it here. If you um, are working in a multi language environment, you might uh, want to change these, uh, uh, change these uh, instructions. But you can see you can yeah, just change almost everything.
So this is for the OSX. We'll leave that default. This is for the onboard client. Um, and yeah, here we need to uh, change something because by default it takes the host name without the domain name. So let's put in here cppm one pub.arubalab.com. And here we can uh, check if the service certificate needs to be uh, validated, but um, we'll leave that. By the way, this, if you have a code signing certificate, the onboard application will be signed. So um, yeah, as we don't have it uh, here, uh, users will get a pop-up that the application might be untrusted. So if you have that code signing certificate, you can put it here and it will uh, reduce the number of pop-ups that people need to click uh, by one. Um, here we can yeah, change a uh, logo, uh, for example, but uh, yeah, leave it on the default. And if you want to change it, just uh, make it uh, uh, make that uh, difference uh, or make that change later on. And this is where we can uh, enable sponsorship. So if we want to have someone approve the onboarding process, um, this is where we can do that. So then uh, we go into save here. So one last thing that we need to do, and for that we need to uh, return to the policy manager, we need to create a service here that uh, allows our onboarding. So we go into our services, we create a new service, which is an application authentication workshop on board. So for this application name, we'll pick the onboard. So if an onboarding client tries to authorize, it will be uh, this application. Here we select again our Active Directory. Here we select our default role mapping. And here in the enforcement, um, yeah, let's create a new one. And what we are trying to do is uh, we are creating a policy that only allows employees and contractors to onboard. So um, by default, we will deny access. And here, if we have the tips roles, employee, we will allow. And if it's a contractor, we will allow as well. So just contractors and employees can onboard. So let's save this one. And then here we select the onboard enforcement and we can save the service. So no application is selected. We missed that. So let's save. So um, this one is now um, also here. So let's move it up a bit because it makes more sense in the administrative uh, login. So let's put it there. So, and this concludes the configuration or the basic configuration of onboarding. In the next video, we will be onboarding a client, see how that works um, in the back end uh, on the client um, and make you more familiar with that one. So thank you very much for watching. And uh, if you like this video, please press the like button below or press the dislike if you don't like it and put your comments below this video. And if you subscribe to the channel, uh, when the next video comes out, you will be notified. So thank you very much for watching.